reporting for you live tonight from Florida, but we want to broaden out again nationally. Look at this blue wave that Democrats say is sweeping the nation. The New York Times reporting that Republicans are fearing the losses would damage morale and deal a blow to the party in Florida and beyond if the Democrats can work up a national impact. House Democratic leaders are saying today that their first vote will be on a wide-ranging bill to actually strengthen democracy itself, something we've been talking about amidst these recounts. The provisions, well, let me show you the basics. Restore part of the Voting Rights Act, which was knocked out by the Supreme Court. Remove the power of state lawmakers to gerrymandered districts, something that is widely opposed across the political spectrum. Require candidates to release, guess what? their hidden tax returns, <clears throat> Trump, obviously, and then overturn, if they could find a way to do this, the Supreme Court Citizen United ruling. The last part is something our next guest knows all about. Democratic power player, former U.S. Senator Russ Feingold of Wisconsin. He led the landmark campaign finance legislation with the late Senator John McCain. That, of course, was limited by Citizens United. Uh, thanks, first of all, for coming on the show uh, at a busy time. Uh, second, I want to I start with this. You were widely known as being part of the wing of the Democratic Party that said, run big, take on corporations, take on special interests, and if that means they call you liberal or lefty or progressive, so be it. Uh, your, your friend, another late uh, senator friend of yours, uh, Paul Wellstone, called that the Democratic wing of the Democratic Party. When you look at Tuesday, do you think that's an endorsement of that approach for Democrats? Well, first of all, you're down there in Florida where it's nice and warm and you're talking about alligators. And I'm, I'm up here where it's about 15 <laughs> degrees in Wisconsin. But the political climate has greatly improved here. Uh, and it's because people came together, not just liberals, not just conservatives, not just Democrats and Republicans. And they finally said, we're tired of the divisiveness up here in Wisconsin over the last eight years. And I think Wisconsin, with our new governor, and our new state officers has shown that this is a template for the way to change things in 2020, for the way to relieve ourselves of this awful Trump administration. So I'm excited about it. And of course, I am a progressive and I lean toward those progressive views. But I think the House bill that you just described really is about not a particular ideology, but is about good government. It's about restoring the legitimacy of our right. government, whether it be voting rights, or uh, making sure people release their tax returns, campaign finance. These aren't partisan issues. They weren't partisan when I was working with John McCain. Uh, and so well, I think it's very on, wise for them to begin with this. Senator, let's focus on two pieces there. You mentioned voting rights and uh, you mentioned the gerrymandering. Uh, the state I'm in, this cannot be overemphasized, is a place where every big political race here was so tight we are in recounts. We might be headed to double recounts Thursday. And yet on the question of whether people who've committed an offense should still have voting rights, ran away with it, 60 percent. The gerrymandering, depending on how you ask the polling, as you know, runs 70, 80, sometimes 90 percent uh, that Americans say, yeah, we should pick the vote. We should pick the politicians. The politicians shouldn't pick the voters. Um, so when you see Democrats say that's their first priority, uh, are they going to be able to tap into that in the Trump era? Or do those issues risk being polarized by this toxic environment? You know, I don't think it's a polarizing issue. You know, here in Wisconsin, we did have a good night, but we made no progress in our state assembly and state senate because of gerrymandering. It was the case from Wisconsin, which unfortunately the Supreme Court did not ruled properly on that proved that actually we lost uh, races where we should not have lost them. It's only because of partisanship and the same thing in many other places in the country. So focusing on this is about fairness. Uh, it's about making sure that the legislatures and the governors, uh, when they do the reapportionment in a couple of years, realize that they're going to be watched very closely for not creating this unfairness. How can you have a person like Tony Evers become governor of Wisconsin, Tammy Baldwin wins her Senate seat by a wide margin, we win the state offices, and yet no change in the legislative races? That's basically cheating. And I think that's the kind of thing the American people will realize is wrong. And it's only one of a many, a, a many good government aspects of what the House bill is about. I think it's a good strategy. Take a listen to Mitch McConnell saying that if Democrats use their new power to fixate on President Trump, it'll be the same mistake that Republicans did with President Clinton. We impeached President Clinton. His numbers went up and ours went down. And we underperformed in the next election. So the Democrats in the House will have to decide just how much presidential harassment they think is good strategy. Is that right? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Replacing Donald Trump in 2020 is what it's all about. That's what we have to do. And it's really for two reasons. The American people want the rule of law restored. We have a president who has no regard for the rule of law when it affects him. Secondly, he is completely disrespectful to the American people. He talks to people in the most demeaning way and is frankly uh, outrageous. And I think the American people are sick and tired of it, particularly in the Midwest. Look what happened in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. He's in deep trouble. And these people weren't voting uh, against uh, the, ec the economy. The economy's in good shape. They were voting against the fact that Donald Trump does not belong as president, that having him as president is really a national emergency. And if we make sure that that is the key, that we're going to replace uh, the president with somebody who is capable and decent and respectful of the American people, that's going to be the winner in the Midwest because those are Midwestern values. Yeah, well, the data in the Rust Belt uh, certainly was a shift. Uh, former Senator Russ Feingold has worked on so many of these issues. Thanks for joining me tonight. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.